Welcome to GUI and in my browsers for 16th or of June, I think, 2020. Um, interesting part is that we now nominate note takers. Uh, is it the person on the top right? Alex, is that the right? Should I pick the right or left? I pick the left. That's me. <laughs> Good news. Um, no, that won't stick. Let's pick someone on the right side. Uh, good news, Jessica. <laughs> you are no taker this week. Yeah, I take notes in every meeting anyway, so. <laughs> All right, um, cool. So I got three quick announcements. Uh, first one, uh, GUI and web browsers our working group again so that's that's cool um so we'll have uh, probably more folks more structure uh updates on that uh soon um oh yeah uh, another announcement is that brave is now working on embedding um embedding go ipfs and i think it's official because it's on the github so I can share my screen. Ta -da. So if anyone is interested in uh, tracking that, there's this like a meta issue with initial description of how we imagine that integration will look like. Um, those are like, very broad strokes, but uh, super exciting. And I think another one is that uh, the latest version of IPFS Companion lets people to opt in to using the latest web UI. So uh, not everyone, but some folks uh, were complaining that when you click on the, uh, when you open web UI from Companion, it will pick the version that is hard coded in JS IPFS or Go IPFS. Uh, so if you want to run the latest and the greatest uh, from uh, web UI that IPFS IO, and you trust your DNS resolver and you set up all the course headers, uh, then you can toggle the switch and uh, IPFS Companion will open uh, the latest web UI build from, uh, from its rep repo. It's, uh, as far as I know, it's for the latest version from the master. So be wary of that. Um, yep, I think that's it. Um, the next point I, oh gosh, I should like randomize the stuff. So I don't talk all the time in the beginning, but the next steps for pinning API integration. Um, I think the quick update on my end here is that we've identified the problem of the state. Um, so the background here is that we want to add uh, pinning service integration to IPFS oh, desktop, sorry. but namely to web UI. Uh -huh. Oh, hi. Dietrich is asking to get into the meeting. Sorry. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Hello, Dietrich. Are you a real person? OK. <laughs> um, so uh, next steps for pinning API integration. Um, Long story short, we want to add support for like third-party pinning services such as Pinata uh, and others, um, and add UI to web UI and IPFS desktop to be able to uh, quickly uh, pin something remotely. And we identified that there's a problem of state. Uh, right now, web UI itself is just a like, single page application, which is uh, effectively which you point at the remote API and that remote API represents a node and you can switch between nodes. So apart from like the language that you choose and like sending uh, country metrics, there's no state, no cookies in web UI, which uh, could uh, be leveraged for storing the list of uh, pinning services. And if you uh, define pinning service in uh, IPFS desktop, which embeds web UI, you would want to see the same list of defined pinning services when you open a web UI from IPFS Companion, right? 
So we need to persist the state, the list of pinning services uh, in the node in Go IPFS somehow. And initial idea is to you to create the config namespace for pinning remote pinning services. Um, it makes sense because if we have that uh, in the config, then Go IPFS itself could start. Uh, leveraging that information and for example you could have when you pin something from the command line it could automatically uh, pin something remotely as well uh, but that, that, that's just like an initial idea we'll probably have a document with uh, a sketch of uh, APIs that we need from uh, the UI side uh, I'll uh, we'll have like a probably a separate call about that with Jessica and Rafael after this call. Uh, but it's just like to give a status update on this endeavor. Um, is there anything to add, Jessica, Rafael? Uh, I actually had a, an item later in the agenda for that, which was Rafael, do you have any updates? I know you were gone for a few days. So how's, how is it going? Yeah, um, when I came back from all this, the only thing I've worked on from pinning services was the settings page mockup. So there's no much functionality to show there, just mockups for now, just add services and uh, all of that. So yeah, no extra stuff on the, on the Go EPFS part. Cool. So probably an app. A bigger update next week uh, in two weeks <laughs> it's be weekly call um cool um all right uh, this is something i've added but i feel it's valuable to have it uh Irakli, do you want to um yeah sure am i muted no i'm not hmm. um i read notes too um okay so at the moment, IPFS DAG API is API compatible, pretty much. Uh, it passes. Uh, sorry, all sorry, the... just just to give a context. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, yeah, I suck that make at switching the topic. So uh, this will be an update on sharing IPFS node across browsing contexts and uh, within the same origin. That's like the first goal post we have. Yes. Um, yeah, so essentially we have a, another IPFS implementation that works over message protocol and it implements a subset of IGS IPFS API. At the moment, DAG API uh, under IPFS is uh, fully implemented and it passes most of the tests. A few tests are disabled uh, because they're doing some argument normalizations that I have not implemented. Uh, but as I said, it does pass. Uh, IPFS.add function had been also fully implemented and all the tests passing except few that I disabled because they depend on IPFS.object or IPFS.start, oh sorry, files, start APIs that are not implemented so I couldn't run those tests. Um, uh, this work required a bunch of changes in other libraries within the dependency trace. Uh, uh, that, in, that make U and eight arrays usable in place of buffers. Uh, so there are like multiple levels of uh, dependencies. So they're slowly propagating once they make it and I will push them to IPFS as well. Um, yeah, so with the MFE, I only have IPFS cut left. Um, uh, and once that's done, I'll be requesting review and it will be a lot of fun because it's a lot of changes. Yeah, um, and for ad like additional context is uh, there's a, a lot uh, w w when Iraqi started working on this, the, we've identified a lot of problems when um, the need for passing data or passing content identifiers between different browsing contexts, uh, the need for like serialization and the serialization, not everything was uh, being just like passed in the browser context. So a lot of... Uh, um, yeah, so browser does a, uh, a structure cloning when you pass ac things across threads and some of the data structures come out different ways and they went in, one of them being uh, 
uh, uh, node buffers as they come out as unit aid arrays. That's why some of the changes have been made. Uh, so a bunch of things were that still an issue, but in the meantime, I added a serialization, deserialization phase on both ends, and there are ongoing discussions on trying to make some changes in the library surrounding to not have that step, but I'm not sure if they will ever be uh, made or not. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, I mentioned it because we've initially hit the problem of like multiple layers of either serializing, deserializing on or overall performance impact or when we introduced window IPFS experiment. And we had this like all the post message uh, proxying uh, in place. Uh, I know there are um, like right now it's disabled in companion, but it may get back at some point uh, in some form. Uh, but there are like MetaMask is probably hitting sim at some point. It's also like a browser extension and they have multiple contexts and they inject window uh, web free and uh, window Ethereum uh, into pages. So there's like probably the same problem space. Um, I know Brave uh, is using a fork of MetaMask and it, it's a bit older. It does not support uh, those uh, new experimental uh, plugin systems, but at some point it may be that if we have a native IPFS in Brave and they decide to implement that APIs, uh, those APIs from uh, like web, Window Web 3, we may once again get to the point when those performance issues are relevant again. Um, um, I would say it's not really a performance issue as much as it's a complexity issue. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I don't think the performance of it will be as impactful. Uh, it's probably negligible in the grand scheme of things, but complexity overhead is really high and I would be, and honestly, like it feels like fighting the browser environment rather than playing with it. So if we can make changes to do it, to play nicer, that would be, I think, good. So. Hopefully we can make it as uh, I can link the conversations that are happening on the CIDs within this context. CIDs is pretty much only reason right now I do the serialization, this serialization. So if we can resolve that, that would go away too. Yeah. If you can like add links to notes, uh, uh, yeah, that would be super useful. Cool. cool. Uh, next one is the tricks. Uh, Ranger Moav, who's doing some of the brave, browser, the brave local discovery between browsers work, uh, tweeted yesterday with a dweb browser that he's working on. Just a, a toy browser, uh, but also uh, the goal is to add all of the protocols, which is pretty funny. And he's working on IPFS support right now and already has that hypercore. So worth, worth checking out and hopefully he'll file some issues as a uh, as an implementer of IPFS in browsers. That's cool. Uh, the next one's also me. Uh, I've been joining, so uh, you probably all saw the, the work that Microsoft launched on the mainnet with their identity service. That is a instance of some of the decentralized identity efforts and standards uh, implementation of DIDs. They're also working with a larger group that's combined W3C and decentralized identity foundation work on uh, kind of a, what they were calling encrypted data vaults, this idea of personal storage, user centric storage that travels around the separation between user storage uh, data and the services and applications that might operate against that data. And uh, now this is called the secure data storage uh, spec at this point. This group is meeting weekly. Uh, the meetings are open if people are interested. I linked to a couple of, of interesting things. We have some, some folks, that, like some of the Microsoft people are there and Johnny Crunch is there and a few other folks that consistently bring up uh, Ori Steele, who's been filing some of the issues in our repos recently related to this work, um, that, who've been pushing IPFS as a use case. So every time there's a HTTP centric part of the conversation, some one of those folks will pop their hand up and say, well, how would this work with IPFS? And it's great because it's really quickly reoriented the thinking of that group uh, to really consider network agnostic protocols and standards. Um, right now, these, weeding, these meetings are all weeds. 
um, they're, they're basically like, yeah, at this point, they're like, where, what is the application? What are the layers? So like what the, the one issue I looked at or I linked to is a proposal for one way of defining what the layers are. And there's, so it's, it's actually really interesting because it's a lot, like there's already a spec and everybody kind of knows where they want to get to in the bigger picture. Uh, but they are really working on like language application stack and layer norms at this point. Uh, but I think the salient bit for us is more that that storage is expected to be content addressable as, as, a, as a function. And that, that is very, very interesting for us in the long term. And some of the partners who are working on that have really expressed an interest of IPFS should really should be like the normative default layer as an example. Um, so even if it's not named in the spec, a lot of the, the prototypes and examples will use IPFS. So it's a pretty big win already just in the culture of having this group of people start to think in a not HTTP, you know, uh, blinders way, but starting to think uh, network agnostic out of the box when approaching these types of standards. Um, a big opportunity yes, for us in the long term, but interesting for the work that we're doing in browsers as you know, really the, the, the end goal would be that something like this is implemented in a browser or in a browser plugin and eventually as a browser standard. Uh, browsers being the user agent and the most, the most logical place to be able to store and manage this type of data. Uh, just for, for the record, is it like an official W3C uh, working group or is it just like people from all around? Yeah, I think I think I, I, the I can't remember if it. I think it's just community group, and then but they had to work out like uh, the uh, the IP and patent policies to be able to make it a joint decentralized identity foundation and W three C effort. So they've kind of like at the at the broader level figured out how those two organizations work together. So I think eventually it will probably be more formalized in W three C instead of just. But I think it's just a community group at this point. I might be wrong. Cool. Um, all right, we are at the end of the agenda and moving to highlights. If you have any topic that you want to add to agenda, that's a good time. I will be talking a little bit about the first item. Uh, the first item is in the past two weeks, we had a release of IPFS Companion and then we had a release of IPFS Companion. So we got uh, 2.13.0, which shipped a revamped welcome screen with all new on, uh, updated onboarding materials. So big thank you for Jessica for uh, doing all the work. I just shipped it with a release. So uh, now if you want to go to the welcome screen, you can click on this cube and you are back to the welcome screen. Before you've seen it only once on install, now you can get back to it um, and another thing that happened is all the doc links point to the new doc website which is for frequent users like the actual main useful point of this is the fact that now you've got three buttons there that say status spheres and peers and files so you can actually go to the web ui screen that you want to go to without a second click. Oh yeah, totally. I was about to say that now you can, <laughs> instead of like, <laughs> depending on this one, we probably need to add it here. <laughs> but uh, New Docs website, we also link everywhere to it uh, from that landing page. And um, small bug fixes, but in the 2.13.1, there's this opt-in for, uh, latest web UI. And we also got some new languages. Uh, I think it's a, I think this really shipped Arabic. However, we did not do the proper audit of IPFS companion nor any other of our interfaces. What happens when you switch to language, which is not from left to right, but from right to left. Uh, that's something to add to the to do list. Uh, Hopefully the person that contributed Arabic uh, language will raise any issues if they are there. All right, I'm struggling to stop sharing for some reason. I can not move the window. Um, 
Next one is, I think, Jessica's. So Jessica. Yeah, this is super quick. Um, so the IPFS GUI usage survey that we did like a month ago, um, I have finally gone through all of the verbatim responses for that, as well as the like almost 2,000 verbatim responses from the companion uninstall survey that gets kicked back to people to try to categorize some of that stuff. Um, there is a link there. I'm not going to share my screen because right now it's just got everything in, in some graphs and I want to add some additional notes, but um, I will update this group. Uh, TLDR, um, it's looking like a very good argument both for <laughs> vastly increasing the uh, beginner friendly in nature of our GUI of our GUI apps, particularly companion, like that was by far the number one. Like people are just like, I don't know what this is. Um, but then also just for, um, it, it also provides some really strong backing for um, support in the GUI apps for both pinning, um, whether that's third-party pinning services, um, and then also a lot of talk about the use case of I run five, I run five nodes in my house and I want to make a, a, a tiny private cluster forum, for example. So um, watch that space, but that's, those are, those are mainly the big two takeaways I've seen so far. Um, Alex is trying to get in back to the room if somebody can let him. <laughs> I'm sorry, Alex. I'm so sorry. Hey, Jessica, how, how much of that do you think is uh, just the, actually like, addons.mozilla.org or the Chrome App Store being a marketing engagement vector versus how people actually use things? Uh, some and some. I mean, obviously, the feedback that we saw for Companion is only for people who use Companion and they haven't gone any deeper into it. Um, that said, we did see a limited amount of feedback of just there is no beginner friendly stuff for the other GUI apps as, as well. Um, you know, yeah, it's going to be an order of magnitude higher than stuff that people just like randomly, they're like looking up IPFS and they see this extension and they're like, okay, cool. But, um, but I mean, you know, it is still a valid point. You know, we're still, we are still pitching into something that's fairly beginner friendly and we're not really providing a lot of backing for that. Yeah, no, I, I actually think it's more, it's, it's fuel for investing even he more heavily yeah, in that. Agree. If it's a, if it's a, if, if it's a really important broad part of our funnel, then, then we should definitely. Well, right, right. And I mean, and this is stuff that we've wanted to be thinking about for a long, long time. And if we are now being given the go ahead to focus on that very beginning, you know, almost sort of marketing end of that funnel, then let's. Onboarding. Let's do this. Yeah, for additional context, uh, most of companion users are Chromium users. So we have over 31,000 weekly users uh, who installed companion from Chrome Web Store. And we have around 3,000 of users in uh, Mozilla's add-on store. So it's like 10, 10 times um, Chromium users and that's Google Chrome. Uh, but also Brave, uh, Microsoft Edge, the new one, and even Opera for desktop. Like all those browsers are Chromium based. So, so it pretty question, much just tracks the it just tracks market share basically. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yet another. Uh, so the, the the thing is, maybe we should revamp revamp the description or or like all the materials on the. A store listing in Chrome Web Store because like that's effectively the entry point for the, most of the users. Um, like low yeah. hanging fruit. And we heard a lot of feedback of I didn't know I needed to install other things. Yeah, so we should be like clear about that up front. Um, yeah, we I think we talked about that in, in Brooklyn, right? Which is having a goal this year of really really optimizing the companion experience to be around that one singular goal of, in, of installing desktop. Which I think that would be a key part of any onboarding, onboarding for newbies. Step, step one, this won't do much for you if you don't have IPFS installed. Yeah, just, yeah, so like um, the welcome page uh, is very clear now. Um, 
that's okay. That's one more step. You need to either start your note or install IPFS desktop. Um, however, like we probably should be clearer upfront before someone installs it. Because some people just close the tab. Anything that's opens on the install, people tend to close it. Um, definitely something to improve. Um, Rafael, do you want to give a quick update on the accessibility fixes in the web UI? Yep. So basically we had an issue that one of our users is uh, visually impaired and she couldn't uh, use the website properly. When I mean website, the web UI part. Um, I think she was using a desktop version actually, but uh, yeah. the web UI and accessibility a part of it works both ways, both in web UI and desktop because desktop uses web UI. So I went ahead and tried to fix all the accessibility issues. One, by installing a S-Link plugin that checks out any accessibility issues uh, from the code. And two, just navigating, trying to navigate the whole web UI using only the keyboard. Um, also switched up the order before you would go first to the menu navigation, then to the nav bar, then to the content of the page. Now you go to the content of the page first, since the users want the content of the page first. Uh, and also fix a lot of focus, uh, focus elements missing, a lot of feedback as well, buttons, uh, all that good stuff. So yeah, uh, when the next version of Web UI ships, please test it out. If any of you are power users, when I mean power users, I mean like keyboard only users that really like to use it, please provide feedback as well, open issues on it. And we'll also be asking feedback from an invisual impaired group on Discord. Uh, since our user has a Discord group where uh, she and other people go there and talk about uh, and provide feedback for apps. So that's a good point to um, to keep in mind in the future. Yeah, that's fine. This, this is awesome. C can you link that, link a couple of screenshots or link to the issue in that, in the highlights section of these notes? Uh, yes, I'll do Thank that. You. Uh, one second, so highlights. Let me do this here. There you go. Obrigado. I uh, I also I did tweet unrelated. I tweeted the the new. I every time we get new IATN uh, localization requests, I try to put them on Twitter out there so that people will see. We need desktop UI embedded all in new languages all the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's a good timing that you can now opt in to the latest web UI. So if anyone wants to test, you are, and you are running uh, IPFS desktop, well, you can install Companion and open web UI from Companion with that toggle toggled. <laughs> And then you will use the latest one with uh, Rafael's fixes and like, submit any feedback on that. For regular users, uh, I believe the, the only like, visible change will be the fact that when you have a narrow screen, now the, the menu uh, navigation, which was on the left, and when you had a narrow viewport, it was on the top. Now that it goes to the bottom of the page, but that's probably the only visual uh, change for no that was users. sorry Lyle, that was fixed that was a bug i did not intend to do it <laughs> and no, then it i fixed like a it. feature <laughs> <laughs> i know but it was by mistake it was like right. the flex property was only on desktop so i had to give it on <laughs> small oh. devices as well <laughs> to fix it <laughs> then no one will notice <laughs> <laughs> no but it's fixed it's fixed <laughs> for the for the web ui opt in uh, can you add a, add a link to that too? And w is that how we can test the pinning service work as it's coming online? Or is, will, does that require a separate uh, build or branch or 
right? Yeah, I believe, uh, like, actually, you don't need to do anything. You just go to webui.ipfsio. And if if your node is missing any, like, configuration, there there's a new uh, ready for copy and pasting uh, commands that you uh, sort of, like, authorize that website to be able to access your API. Um, so that's, like, a requires manual step. Uh, even if you uh, toggle that toggle in companion, you will still have to do this manual configuration. Uh, but yeah, webui.ipfs.io uh, is the latest version from the master branch. So if we want someone to provide feedback uh, on uh, accessibility fixes and in future, like iterating on the uh, pinning services, that will be the URL to use. Um, yeah. So it does not require like, a bumping web Go IPFS version or JS IPFS version. I believe we are at the end of highlights. So I'm like quickly nervously checking if someone is in the <laughs> waiting room. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you uh, add a link to the to the issue or change for the web UI opt-in? Oh, it's actually like in the release notes of the latest oh, okay. companion cool. screenshot. Great. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. So we are at the end of agenda. Any ad hoc topics you want to discuss? Thoughts, concerns. I guess we were very efficient this week. <laughs> Actually, I, I, I sort of one question. I was going to ask Dietrich earlier, but I forgot, didn't end up doing. Um, in those discussion about the secure storage, is anyone from the protocol apps or IPFS greater community involved to kind of inform the group so they don't make wrong assumptions about how IPFS storage works? Yeah, Johnny Crunch is there every one of those meetings, and he's he's usually pretty good at bringing up those types of concerns. But but like I said, I think more the more people that are present, the more it creates an environment and atmosphere where our concerns are considered. So I, I would recommend that folks just hop in and lurk. Even like that's pretty much what I do. I I don't really say anything other than introduce myself every now and then when they do intros or whatever. Um, but it, just being being there to ask the question or to recognize when a question or, or, or some design choice might be going down the, the non-network agnostic path, network specific path, network exclusive path uh, is, is worth doing. So, and more really like this is really early work too. Like there are some implementations of variations of this, but nothing of the spec yet. Uh, so it's, it's not kind of high priority or emergency, but the presence allows us to shape which, which direction a bit. So, Maybe just worth hanging out if you're interested in, in this stuff. Uh, it's also kind of interesting too to, uh, if you haven't done that kind of stuff before, sit in these meetings and watch how the proceedings go uh, and watch how, how they handle the, the needs and interests of diverse groups of stakeholders who have various competing sometimes implementations uh, and competing feature requests for things like identity. Got it. Okay. I think we had our 10 seconds of awkward silence. <laughs> uh, all right, folks, uh, I won't keep you uh, around mo for long, much longer, mostly because I have a, such a long block of meetings. <laughs> I think everyone will <laughs> deserve some uh, time, like free, freeing up some time. So I'll and this one, like executive decision to finish this week's sooner than later and invite everyone uh, same time in two weeks. Bye. See y'all. <laughs>